Good morning. The lead in music is from the movie The High and the Mighty. And this movie is what started me down the aviation road of life. It has been quite a ride with lots of ups and downs, but it's been a good ride. And yes, the movie The High and the Mighty is still one of my favorites. My name is Robert Novell, and I will be your host for the Third Dimension Blog Podcast as we look back at the history of aviation as well as touch on other subjects that are of special importance to us as aviators. Food for thought. Have we, as aviators, forgotten our roots and the struggles of those who preceded us? I hope not, and I hope that all of us look back at our history and take the time to understand our past. There are a number of resources available that will allow you, as an aviator, to connect with your roots, and the Third Dimension blog is one of those resources. So come with me now as we talk about the beginnings of our profession. Our quote of the week comes to us courtesy of the classical Athenian Greek philosopher Socrates. Man must rise above the earth, to the top of the atmosphere and beyond, for only thus will he fully understand the world in which he lives. Well said, and even though Socrates lived 2,476 years before the first powered flight, he had the heart and soul of an aviator. Now, last week we talked about the art form of barnstorming and how it served as the beginning of commercial aviation. And now I want to look back at an event that developed simultaneously with the barnstorming era. This week we're going to talk about another very important link in commercial aviation that will ultimately serve as a starting point for almost every commercial airline in the U.S. The airmail service pilots. In 1917, the U.S. government decided that it had seen enough progress with the development of airplanes for it to appropriate the money to begin airmail service. This service was initially provided by the U.S. Army Air Corps for the Post Office Department, but in 1918, the Post Office Department took over the operation providing both equipment and pilots. Between 1918 and 1925, there were over 200 pilots who flew as airmail service pilots. Many of these pilots were from the barnstorming industry, and many left the service to go back to barnstorming. Out of those 200 pilots, 44 lost their lives, and many more suffered severe injuries from crashes. Life as an airmail service pilot was almost as dangerous as barnstorming. Congress passed the Kelly Act in 1925. This act authorized the Postmaster General to contract for domestic airmail service with commercial carriers. By transferring airmail operations to private companies, the government would now take commercial aviation to the next level. This is the beginning of the airline industry. Winners of the five initial contracts were National Air Transport, Barney Airlines, Western Air Express, Colonial Air Transport, and Robertson Aircraft Corporation. National and Barney would later become important parts of United, which was originally a joint venture of the Boeing Company and Pratt & Whitney. Western would merge with Transcontinental Air Transport to form Transcontinental and Western Air, what we know as TWA. Robertson would become part of the Universal Aviation Corporation, which in turn would merge with Colonial, Southern Air Transport, and others to form American Airways, which is the predecessor of American Airlines. Juan Tripp, one of the original partners in Colonial, would later pioneer international air travel with Pan Am, a carrier he founded in 1927 to transport mail between Key West, Florida and Havana. The airmail business continued to grow, and more new companies began to be a part of the business. However, one of the most interesting facts about this transition to private companies is that the newly formed companies had to follow the post office formula for pilots' pay. The companies had been informed that the pilots were to be considered quasi-governmental employees, and any airline wishing to change that formula would run the risk of losing its government contract. I find it extremely interesting that the U.S. government, U.S. Post Office, would turn out to be the very first union to represent pilots on a wage and benefit package. Next week, we continue with our look at the beginnings of commercial aviation and the pay scale of the airmail service pilots. Until then, take some time to look back, connect with your past, and remember, 
As an aviator, you are a gatekeeper of the third dimension, regardless of the rating on your certificate. We all must be professional in our conduct and thinking and never sell ourselves or our profession short by letting the marketplace dilute our value as aviators.